survey, like, you know, debate talent is unchangeable or you can always get better today, all those questions are meant to gauge your mindset. And the interesting thing, and I, this is the first thing when I first was introduced to this, I was like, well, what is the correct answer? And it's kind of funny because there isn't a correct answer. The answer depends on your own answer. So people who uh, answer these questions get a fixed mindset or with fixed answers. So they say, it's very difficult to get better at anything, and you basically have the talent that you have. Those people tend not to get better because their mindset shapes the way that they engage with the activity, whatever it is, whether it's art or music or school or debate or whatever. People who have a growth mindset tend to improve just because they have the mindset that they can get better at things through hard work and through uh, self-improvement. So uh, if you uh, took the quiz, uh, I tried to figure out a way to make Google form like automatically calculate this, and I spent a waste of time trying to do that, I can never figure it out. Uh, so you had, to, you had to calculate this yourself, not college school. If you, how many of you had uh, a total of between 20 and 30? And you calculated it. Between 20 and 30, that means that you have a very strong growth mindset. That means that you tend to think that you can get better if you work at something. You tend to think that your intelligence or your talent, in this case your debate talent, is not fixed. It's something that can be improved. Okay. How many of you had between, uh, let's say, like 15 and 20? So you're close, uh, but you have some fixed attributes as well. There are certain things that you think are just kind of set about you or about your debate skills. How many of you? Uh, were between 10 and 15? Nobody? How many of you were between 0 and 10? Okay. Well, I'll look at the spreadsheet. It's not like you're going to get yelled at if you have a uh, fixed mindset. Uh, the, a lot, I think a lot of you do, and I see that all the time. So people who uh, focus and really worry about winning, whether they're going to embarrass themselves in front of their lab leader or in front of uh, their judges or in front of their peers or whatever, that tends to be a part of a fixed mindset because your success or failure at debate is intrinsic to you, so you take it very personally. Like, well, I just lost that demonstrates that I'm not intelligent, or demonstrates that I'm bad at debate. In a growth mindset, you can respond to losing and to failing much more positively because it's not about you. It's not like fixed. It's not that you're always going to be bad at debate, or that you're always going to make this mistake, or that you're always going to lose uh, this argument. It's over the long time, over the long period of time, or your whole debate period, you can continue working and improving, and you can get better. Uh, if you have a growth mindset, I think the rest of this lecture can be very helpful because it can kind of guide some of your natural inclination toward getting better and toward improving yourself. If you have a fixed mindset, I think some of this stuff will be hard uh, to implement or hard to hear, but I hope that some of these tips can kind of change the way that you think about yourself. Because I know it's hard to raise your hand and be like, well, I kind of think that you're either good at debate or you're bad at debate, but I, for a long time I kind of thought that. But I think a lot of people, uh, if you think about it, uh, honestly, do think that. You know, so certain kids are just good at debate, certain kids are bad at debate. Um, but in my experience, that's not, um, that's not true. I don't really do that. Uh, so, uh, I've told this to people before. I don't know if some of you have heard this before. Debate is super hard because it's multidisciplinary. You have to know so much stuff about so many topics. You have to know stuff on this topic about economics and about uh, current foreign policy, about the political process in the United States and the current uh, events going on about the immigration debate. And you also have to know stuff about, like, Frank Wilderson's work on cinema theory and afro pessimism stuff. It's, it's enormous the amount of stuff that students are expected to know just to engage in debates. But I think that you can condense down uh, being good at debate into three principles or three axioms. The first thing is you have to know what you're talking about. No matter what you're debating about, you have to know about it. You can't fake the knowledge and the understanding of the argument. Number two, you have to be ready to tell others what you're talking about. So you have to be prepared. It's not enough to just know something. You have to translate that knowledge into knowing how to tell someone that. And third, you have to effectively tell others what you're talking about. And that's simple, but I think it is an effective way to explain why debate is both simple and difficult. Because the number of things you need to know is enormous. Uh, the amount of preparation that goes into being ready to demonstrate your knowledge to a judge is enormous. And just the communication of your ideas and your arguments to judges is so difficult because the judges are different, the contexts are different, uh, there's a never-ending amount of preparation that goes into uh, giving a debate speech. I think that those three axioms or whatever of debate are the three guiding things that uh, kind of should, you should have in the back of your mind as you're thinking about what is debate camp for. I think debate camp is for 
improving and knowing what you're talking about. It's about improving your preparation and how to prepare. Uh, and it's about improving your delivery and your communication of arguments uh, to judges. If you're only at the Georgetown part of the campus, the only campus you go to, you're going to spend like 250 hours on debate in the next three weeks. If you're in Twice Park or you're going to another camp, it's like 600 hours or something like that. For many of you, it's a lot more. Uh, so the reason that I think the rest of this lecture is important is because you want to maximize those 600 hours. You're not getting them back, right? Uh, you're making a huge investment of your summer into learning more about today and getting better today. Uh, and it would be a tragedy if you wasted a significant portion of that summer, or even any of that summer. Um, so I have three goals. I want to motivate you, and I want to inspire you. Those of you who have been to camp for four years uh, and are in Coy Spartan and are uh, you know, veterans of the camp experience, as well as those of you who raised your hand before that have never been to a camp before, I want to help you uh, get motivated and inspired. Second, I want to give some practical suggestions based on teaching lots and lots of students over many, many years at Summer Institute about how to get better during camp. And third, I'm going to warn you about some of the pitfalls that uh, I have seen students fall into, or mistakes that I've seen students make, uh, beginning students, experienced students, etc. So uh, the rest of the lecture uh, is divided into three parts. So if you're flowing or taking notes about this, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about what I think are the three guiding principles of Summer Debate Institute. Then I'm going to explain seven habits that I think really good summer debate students have that you can emulate. And then finally, I'm going to talk about six mistakes that I think are most commonly uh, made by students at debate. For each of these, I've got uh, uh, some quotations and stuff interspersed here. Um, but we'll fix those. So three guiding principles. Uh, Number one, I think the most important thing that Summer Institute does that is not possible in other places is that it makes you an expert in the topic that enables you to pursue expertise in the topic. A lot of people uh, waste the opportunity they can't provide to get expertise and instead just get repetitions on generic arguments or just small components of the topic. The reason that I think it's so important to pursue topic expertise during the summer is that it's almost impossible to do that during the season. School starts. Specific preparation for tournament starts. You've got to cut your updates. You've got to cut your name strategies, etc., etc. It's very difficult to gain expertise at that point. But if you have expertise, it makes all those other things easier. It makes it easier to do research. It makes it easier to deal with new affirmatives, or new negatives, or new critiques, or whatever, because you have a background and a basis in the topic that you can use as a springboard or as a multiplier for the new stuff that you've got to do. Number two, summer institute is an opportunity to learn how to research and prepare. It's not just an opportunity to research and prepare. It's an opportunity to learn how to research and prepare. I think too many students think of summer institute as just a time to do research and to prep file. That's useful, but it's not as useful as learning how to be better at doing that. Because throughout the year, you're going to have to prep a lot more new files. You're going to have to cut a lot of new cards. You're going to have to learn new files. You're going to have to learn new arguments. You're going to have to scout teams and deal with arguments on the top of your head. Learning how to do those things better will make your season better. If you just spend your summer institute prepping the camp file and highlighting the camp files and practicing the camp files, uh, or just cutting lots of cards, you're missing out on an opportunity to learn from people who are better than you at preparing files and at doing research and at putting together arguments and strategies, constructing affirmatives and all that kind of thing. So use it not just as an example, as an opportunity to do research and to do preparation, but to learn how to do those things better. Third, I think the thing that most of you do understand is that it's an opportunity to practice skills. And by that I mean practicing all of the different component parts that make up debating. The reason that Institute is so good for this is because during the year you have the ballot hanging over your head, you have the win and the loss, you really care whether you win or lose a debate. So you don't want to work on your weaknesses. You don't want to try new things. You don't want to emphasize you know, reading a lot of cards in the one AR or changing, going for a critique when you're not uh, usually doing that, or you know, changing the way that you do uh, signposting or embedded flash in the 2AC, something like that. There's all these little things. It's like, oh, I wish I could get better at that. But during the year, you can't do it, uh, or it's very difficult to do it because it comes at a competitive cost. But during summer, you don't have to care whether you win a practice today. There are no you can practice the process and all of the component parts of being good at debate. We'll talk more about that in the specifics. 
It also gives you a chance to simulate what it's like to be in a debate tournament, what it's like to be in specific rounds. And I'll talk more about this uh, with the Vice Pardon uh, students, but simulating experiences that you will get during the season is one of the things that you can do at camp that makes camp debates more useful. So simulate debating against a critique of her, or simulate debating against a new of or simulate with less prep time, or simulate a debate late at night when you're tired so that you can practice uh, what it feels like to, to be doing a high stress debate uh, late at night like a late elimination round during the season. Uh, but practice the skill. All right, seven habits of highly successful summer debate institute students. I've taught lots and lots and lots and lots of students at all uh, ages and all uh, skill levels and all experience levels and all of that stuff. And I think that these are the seven things that I see as universally true of those students that I would say are the best students that I've taught at summer institute. Number one, they set achievable goals. They set achievable goals. Uh, Zig Ziglar, who's a motivational speaker, says the great majority of people are wandering generalities rather than meaningful specifics. The fact is that you can't hit a target that you can't see. If you don't know where you're going, you will probably end up somewhere else. You have to have goals. Uh, we'll talk uh, in our lab uh, about setting some individual goals, and I think a lot of the other labs are going to discuss that with you as well. Some of them already have, uh, either through a survey or through a discussion or whatever. Uh, but you should set some goals for the whole summer. You should set some goals for individual parts of your summer, the first week, the second week, whatever. You can set goals for individual days or even for individual activities, for practice debates, or practice speeches. I suggest that you write them down uh, and that you be specific and that they be actionable. So, like my goal is already to is to get better at debate. Obviously, that's your goal, but that's not very specific, it's not very actionable. You can't say, well, okay, now I've accomplished my goal of being better at debate. You've got to break it down. You don't want to just say, I want to get better at conditionality or whatever. That's, again, it's nebulous. How do you know if you've gotten better at conditionality? The kind of goals I'm talking about are something like, I want to get better at conditionality, so therefore, I want to prepare conditionality blocks with a peer and then get an instructor to review them. I want to participate in at least three conditionality mini debates, uh, and I want to simulate doing a uh, final uh, rebuttal several times and doing a rebuttal review on conditionality. If you set goals like that, you can actually do them and you can check them off uh, and you can then assess whether you're meeting your goals, whether you're working toward uh, the goals that you set out for the summer. Uh, everything that you do at camp should connect to some goal. You shouldn't just go through the motion. You should think about, all right, this activity that we're doing here, uh, it doesn't really fit with what I've been working on, but I'm going to use it as an opportunity to connect it to this goal that I'm working on. So every time you do uh, a speaking goal, you know, read some critique cards so that you can gain more knowledge about critiques. That connects to your goal about gaining more critique knowledge. Every time you do a mini debate or you do a rebuttal review, you focus on speaking well uh, and get feedback from your instructor about speaking because that connects to your larger goal about improving your speaking during the summer. Uh, and then finally, communicate these goals to your instructor. So if you've already done this, that's awesome. Uh, some of the rest of you will do this in the future, but before you debate in front of someone, a lot of uh, debates that you'll have will be in front of someone who doesn't know you that well, uh, they just know a debate. Let them know what you're working on. Let them know what your goals are. Let them know what feedback you receive from other instructors and what you really want to know. So a lot of times, someone would tell me, like, I'm really working on my cross uh, you know, a 2A. It says, I'm really working on my cross of the 2MC. Uh, and if they tell me that before the debate, before I listen to the debate, I can listen really closely to the cross of the 2MC. Uh, we can look at the video of it afterwards. We can take a video of it or someone audio records it. We can talk about different threads that could have been raised in the cross -ex. We can talk about uh, whether the thread that was raised could have been executed better. We can talk about all those things, but if I didn't know that you were working on your cross-ex and this UMC, I wouldn't have paid close enough attention to that. I might have been paying attention to something else, or writing some notes about the speech that you were just given, uh, or thinking about one of the other participants in the debate, something that they had asked me. Uh, so communicate what you're working on to your instructor, uh, all of your instructors, uh, and they can help you uh, get better. Number two, they listen carefully. Ernest Hemingway said, I like to listen. I have learned a great deal from listening carefully. Most people never listen. And this is true of debate camp. A lot of people kind of listen, but I don't think that they think about a lot of the things that are being discussed or a lot of the things that are being uh, talked about in the lab setting or especially in post round discussions. You just kind of transcribe and zone out and chat with your friends while you're doing that. I think it's really important that S lab students are really kind of invested in their interactions with their instructors. They're invested in their interactions with their lab uh, you know, other lab students with their peers, they're invested when they do rebuttal reviews, they're invested when they do research and get feedback about their research. 
The reason that debate camp is so uh, awesome is because it's so immersive. You all basically do nothing but debate. Uh, and then you like eat and talk to people about debate. And you go play Ultimate Frisbee, talking to people about debate. It's basically nothing but debate uh, as your life for three weeks, or four weeks, or five weeks, or seven weeks, or whatever. Uh, you can make the most of that. You can seek feedback in all sorts of different ways from your peers, from people in other labs. You can seek out help from other instructors. Uh, don't be intimidated. All of your instructors are here to teach you. Uh, I think a lot of people, especially if you're here for the first time at camp, you're like afraid of your lab leader. Most of your lab leaders are not scary. I can't really think of anyone on the staff that I would describe as super scary. Uh, most of them are very invested in teaching debate, either at college or in high school. This is what we do. Uh, so when you come to us and you show that you're genuinely interested in getting better, and you're specific about your goals, and you share your feedback from other instructors, and you seem like you really want to learn, uh, everyone on the staff will be very invested in public, so don't be uh, afraid. Uh, number three, they take useful notes. Emphasis on the word useful. Uh, Lee I. Coco, who's one of the most famous CEOs of all time, says the discipline of writing something down is the first step toward making it happen. Uh, I think you don't need to transcribe everything I say or everything that you know Hardy says tomorrow about Cuba or everything that Andres and Weston say about Mexico or anything that Maggie says about Venezuela, you know, that's not that useful, right? But if you listen carefully and write down the important parts, and then more importantly, you kind of revisit your notes and then write down the stuff that you want to look into, the stuff that piqued your interest or the stuff that you don't understand, uh, you can get a lot more out of these, these kinds of lectures. And then whenever you're getting feedback in a lab situation, in a redo situation, in a practice debate, if you write down the comments that you receive and you really think about them, take the time to make those notes careful, by the end of the summer, you're going to have a, a beautiful document that documents your experience here, and it will document all the things that you've learned and all the things that you've been introduced to but that you don't yet know, and you can use those notes as a resource throughout the season. Uh, I would encourage you to share stuff with other people, uh, so share your notes. There's a lot of different electives during the course of Georgetown and at the FCI. Uh, some of you will go to some electives, some of you will go to other electives, you know, trade notes about that, talk to each other about those electives, you know, go to lunch with people who went to a different elective, and just, you know, half the lunch talk about the elective you went to, half the lunch talk about the elective they went to. Uh, a lot of times, there's also an opportunity to transform your notes into something you can use in debate. So transform those, just like, notes that you've been typing into a usable block. So a lot of times, a lab leader will say, you know, that's not how you answer intrinsicness. What you need to say to answer intrinsicness is this and this and this. Most of the kids are just like, okay, sounds good. Uh, but what you could have just done is you could have just gotten yourself a good intrinsicness block from one of your instructors who knows a ton about debating intrinsicness. Or you could have just got an excellent way to answer cross-sex question about you know, a pay concept that you have trouble with. You could have gotten an excellent explanation of how to compare two impact. Use that stuff and take the five minutes after lab to transform what was just an abstract note into something that you can put in your electronic tub and add to your arsenal of materials for debate. Uh, number four, they take every activity seriously. I think this one's really important. Dale Carnegie, another uh, famous uh, business guy. Don't be afraid to give your best to what seemingly are small jobs. Every time you conquer one, it makes you that much stronger. If you do the little jobs well, the big ones will tend to take care of themselves. A lot of times, stuff you would make them can get boring. But it's only boring if you let it be boring. It's not boring if you can transform it from boring, menial task into challenging tasks that can help you meet one of your goals or help you improve in one of the areas that you've identified as a weakness. Uh, Carol Dweck, the person who wrote the Mindset book, uh, has this question that you should ask after you do everything that you do. What did I or can I learn from that experience? How can I use it as a basis for growth? Sometimes the stuff you do at camp is boring. Right? That's totally reasonable for you to think. Sometimes you would rather be playing Pokemon, or you would rather be watching a movie or whatever. That's understandable. It's not like you're a bad person for losing interest for a while, for wanting to zone out. But if you can train yourself and remind yourself that every time you're doing something about debate, there's an opportunity for you to get better, you can help make some of the stuff that's boring challenging. You know, instead of just <coughs> meaningly cutting cards for an hour, try to make it a contest. Try to cut the best card that you can. Try to cut a better card than the person that you're working on assignment with. Try to uh, cut cards from a new database and use that as a, as a challenge. Can I cut a new card from EBSCO? Can I cut you know, a new card from JSTOR or something? 
This is the place where you can connect those goals that you have established to the menial tasks that make up the big camp. Number five, they take chances. Uh, Walter Anderson, who's an artist, says our lives improve only when we take chances. And the first and most difficult risk we can take is to be honest with ourselves. I think what that means is, uh, and the reason that I think that this is uh, applicable, is that you have to be realistic about your strengths and you have to be realistic about your weaknesses. You have to use debate camp as an opportunity to solidify what you're already good at and then also to improve the areas where you're weak. And that's the, that's the harder place. Because that requires putting yourself out there. If you're terrible at debating critiques, you constantly get in front of the lab as the sample student answering your critique, uh, or you're terrible at critique and you debate it, you're terrible at debating topicality, and you vote for topicality in front of you know, Andre Scannon or Seth Gannon or Tim Mahoney or whatever, you're putting yourself out there. You're saying, oh, this is not my best, but I appreciate the opportunity to learn from you in an area where I'm weak. And that, taking that chance is hard because you put your ego on them. Well, Mr. Gannon won't think that I'm good at debate, won't think that I'm bad because I didn't execute this top of failure very well. But Mr. Gannon's not going to think you're bad, he's going to think that you're awesome because you're trying to improve a weakness. And that's ultimately what will make you better at debate. If you only practice the things you're already good at, you're not going to succeed. It's like LeBron James, if you only, uh, if you only practiced dunking and fast breaking, which he was already good at, he probably wouldn't have won two NBA championships. He had to master an outside shot, he had to master a post up uh, number six, they cope well with setbacks. This is related. Uh, Jillian Michaels, who's like a, a sort of mindset kind of person. Part of abandoning the all or nothing mentality is allowing yourself room for setbacks. We are bound to have lapses on the road to health and wellness, but it is critical that we learn how to handle small failures positively so that we can minimize their long-term destructive effects. One setback is one setback. It is not the end of the world, nor is it the end of your journey toward a better you. Carol Dweck has a real short one that I think is also good. This is hard, this is fun. If you're here for three weeks, and this is the first time you've been at debate camp, it's gonna feel like three months. If you're doing seven weeks, seven weeks by the time seven weeks is done, I'm almost dead. It's grueling, it's super long, right? It takes a long time. You can't do 12 hour days for the rest of your, you know, the whole summer. It's very hard, and a lot of you do even more than that. It's inevitable that you're going to fail at stuff. You do so many things at today's time. You're going to not be at the top of your game, you're going to be tired, you're just going to not be as experienced on a certain thing, you're just going to mess up. You're going to give a terrible speech, you're going to do a terrible job on a research assignment. But that doesn't define you. That's just one setback. Students that have that setback and then just shut down, and they stop working to improve and think like, oh, I'm so ashamed that I did a poor job. I just, I never speak in front of the lab again. Or I'm never going for topicality again. Or I can't put cards. I just can't do it. I'm not doing it. Those students are allowed one setback to derail this whole project of self-improvement that they're trying to undergo during the summer. Students that succeed at camp are able to kind of put those things in perspective. It's like, yes, I messed up here, but it's okay. I've seen some fantastic debaters give horrible speeches. And I think a lot of times those students are like, oh, I'm so ashamed. I gave a horrible speech. Now I'm going to think that I'm terrible at debate. And I never think that. Because I've seen uh, Jordan in here. Where's Jordan? I'll think I'm Jordan because I think Jordan thinks this. Uh, so Jordan Epstein, I saw you a speech that was just abysmal. Like one of the worst speeches I've seen someone that good give. I think Jordan's like, oh, man, I'm going to think I'm terrible. Jordan's awesome. I've seen Jordan give hundreds of speeches. Several hundred speeches, probably. And Jordan's an outstanding debate. If Jordan allows that one mistake to define his debate career or define his perception of himself, then he's making a huge mistake because it is one mistake. <coughs> so keep that in mind. You're going to fail during camp. All of you. Uh, that's okay. Number seven, they develop good, sustainable habits. John Dryden, an author, says we first make our habits, then our habits make us. During the summer, Think about what life is going to be like for you in the fall. I always have these grand aspirations about all the things I'm going to be able to do in the fall, and I can never do them because it's busy. You have to get ready for the first tournament, you have to go to school. A lot of you have to deal with college applications. It's horrible, right? You don't have an infinite amount of time. One of the things that you can do at camp is you can start to develop habits that will make your life easier in the fall. You can be better and more efficient at preparing. You can have better 
research skills, so it doesn't take you as long to do research assignments. You can get better at highlighting cards, which you can highlight a file without taking as much time. You can get better at time management. You can get better at balancing competing responsibilities. You can get better just like living more productively. And that stuff carries over uh, to the season, and that carryover is sometimes the best things that students get out of debate. You can obviously learn a lot of stuff during the summer about debate, but the, most, the thing that will have the most impact on your life is just learning how to be a better debating human being, learning how to balance debate, uh, get better at preparing, get better at doing the hard work of debate without ruining the rest of your life. It can be tough to balance that stuff. Uh, all right, the flip side. Here are some things, six things, that I think students fail sometimes uh, during camp by doing, or six, I guess, mistakes is the right word. Number one, they stay in their comfort zones. Uh, I have two quotes about this, but I just found a new one, uh, and I like both of them, and I think this is the most important thing that I will tell you today. Uh, Sierra Lawton says, unless you try to do something beyond what you have mastered, you will never grow. And Morgan McCall, this is from the, the uh, Mindset book, uh, wrote a book about a bunch of like, famous CEOs, a book called High Flyers. I don't know that much more about it, it's just quoted in Mindset. Uh, he says, unfortunately, people, people often like the things that work against their growth. People like to use their strengths to achieve, to achieve quick, dramatic results, even if they aren't developing the new skills they will need later on. People like to believe they're as good as everyone says, and not take their weaknesses as seriously as they might. People don't like to hear bad news or get criticism. There is tremendous risk in leaving what one does well to attempt to master something new. I think that when I read that, I was like, that's the debate. I've already talked about this, but it's really scary to put yourself on the line. And so one re reaction to that could be, I'm not putting myself on the line. If you make that decision, you might protect your ego, but you're not making the most out of the debate camp. You're not growing as much as you could during the summer. And a lot of times you're not really growing much at all. It's the illusion of doing well. Because while you're just staying the same and showing off the skills you already have, the people sitting next to you who look like they're not doing as good a job as you are actually laughing because they're working on the things that they're weak at. When you get to the season, all of a sudden you know, you're the same debater. And they're awesome. You, know, you get to the end of the summer and you know, Nikhil is the same guy, but Munoz has gotten a ton better. Or Munoz is the same guy and Jonathan is the same guy. And you don't really notice it until we're back during the regular season. Because camp debates don't really do a very good job of assessing how good we are. Uh, because the good students during the summer are practicing their weaknesses. If you only saw LeBron James shoot three-pointers, you wouldn't think he's the greatest basketball player in the world. <coughs> but then he gets back on the court and like, wow, now he can shoot three-pointers, and he's amazing at defense, and he's really good at all these other things. Uh, number two, they are resistant to change. Dale Carnegie, again, keep your mind open to change all the time. Welcome it, court it. It is only by examining and re-examining your opinions and ideas that you can progress. This one's difficult for me sometimes. It's hard for me to change my mind about some things. But I try to remind myself all the time that that's what we're here for at camp. The reason I like working at camp and I like working with such a diverse set of instructors and such a diverse set of students is that I learn from you. I think most of the lab leaders here learn from each other and they learn from the students. A lot of you are just used to a certain way of doing things. You're used to a certain set of arguments. You're used to a certain philosophy about debate. You're used to a certain way of preparing for debate. A certain way of doing paperless. Or a certain way of you know, cutting cards. Or a certain way of putting together 1ACs. Or putting together negative strategies. Or whatever. During the summer, you can expand your horizons. That doesn't mean that you have to change. You don't have to come to the camp as someone who's primarily a K-debater. And then learn policy arguments and then go back to uh, your school and only make policy arguments. And in the same way, if you're someone who you know, only debates uh, policy arguments and then you come to camp and you learn critique arguments, you don't have to go home and only read critique arguments. But by exposing yourself to different ways to debate, different arguments, different ways to prepare, different ways to research, different ways of just thinking about debate, different ways to judge, different ways to teach, you're going to notice as you listen to different people talk, a lot of us have very different teaching methods, a lot of us have different philosophies about debate. Soak that up. Not because we're right, not because any particular one of us is the truth, but because the more you get exposed to different ideas, the better you will be able to cope with those ideas in debates. That means you'll be able to debate in front of more judges. It means you'll be able to debate different types of arguments. It means you'll be able to prepare better because you can pick up you know, different tips and tricks from your peers. But don't just do things 
that are your bread and butter, even if you end up going back to those, it's worth it to spend the summer broadening um, what you do. Number three, they burn themselves out. Uh, this one happens both with uh, younger students who are just, it's really difficult to be at camp, uh, and with older students who just want to work all the time. Uh, Bill Bowerman, who's the co-founder of Nike, says the idea that the harder you work, the better you're going to be is just garbage. The greatest improvement is made by the man or woman who works most intelligently. And Eric Lindros, uh, the hockey player, says it's not necessarily the amount of time you spend at practice that counts, it's what you put into the practice. You're all here for a long time. Three weeks is a long time, even after doing seven weeks. By the time the third week is over, I'm tired already. If you're doing seven weeks, you'll be exhausted. Right? That's normal. Think about, is the time I'm investing productive? Am I putting my best effort into this? Would it be better for me to just call it quits for the night, go to sleep, and wake up tomorrow and start again fresh? Oftentimes, the answer is yes. Don't think that because you stay up till 4 in the morning that you're doing a good job at camp. You're probably doing a terrible job, unless you're you know, a very special person who doesn't need very much sleep. You're just wearing yourself out. You're just tiring yourself. It means that you're not your best during the day. It means that you're not getting the most out of uh, activities. You know, don't skip meals to do speeches. Don't uh, stay up super late. Don't, uh, don't do all of that stuff that some of you have the attendance meeting. Uh, and then be honest about how you're doing mentally. It's like very wearing, especially if it gets super hot. It's like super hot today and it might get even hotter you know, last year was warm. You can just get burned out. You can just get tired. You can just be like, the thought of going to the big camp, the big lab again today, it's just too much for me, I just can't do it, I don't feel good, I just need to sleep. You're not like you're not supposed to just take nap breaks from debate camp. But if you feel like you're at that level, just tell the people in the dorm, like, look, I'm exhausted, I don't feel well, I need a break. And that's cool, right? It's better to do that than to keep trying to push through and then get sick for a long time. I got sick for like a week last year, it was terrible. And every year there are certain kids who are like doing great and pushing themselves, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing, but there's no way they can sustain this. And then they get sick, and then it's terrible. Try to prevent that. Try to, you know, know when it's time to just be like, all right, back me off for a second. That's not. I'm not telling you to be lazy. I'm telling you to be responsible about what you can handle, how much you can do, uh, and don't just think, all right, I'm a failure at debate because I'm not spending as many hours as this other person. That's not the metric. It's how much are you getting out of the work that you do. Number four, they get overwhelmed. Mark Twain, I like this one. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. The secret of getting started is breaking your complex, overwhelming tasks into small, manageable tasks, and then starting on the first one. And then John Wooden, who has like a million amazing quotes that I love. I think JP is really into uh, John Wooden. A lot of what he has written maps really well onto debate. You have to apply yourself each day to becoming a little better. By applying yourself to the task of becoming a little better each and every day over a period of time, you will become a lot better. I really like that one. Those of you who are at your first day camp, I've already probably unintentionally, but it's just hard for me not to, said a bunch of words that you don't understand, or like debate concepts that you don't understand. I apologize for that. And some of you are probably thinking, wow, I don't know any of, the, any of those things. I, I must not know what debate is. It's overwhelming. I can't possibly learn all of those things. And that's understandable why you would feel like that, but it's just not true. You can break down debate into smaller parts, and your lab leaders will help you do that. Uh, and if you break it down into small parts and then chip away at it every day, try and turn those the gigantic thing like I have to know everything about Cuba and Mexico. Oh, wow, that sounds really cool. Oh, also I have to know everything about critical theory. That sounds like cool. also I have to know everything about international relations. Also I have to know everything about grammar, like the word, meaning of words. Also I have to know everything about debate theory. Wow. Also I have to know how to research. That's I can't do that. Right? That's, that's a lot of things. But you can learn a little bit today about some of the uh, topic. You can learn a little bit more tomorrow about Cuba. You can learn a little bit about the big theory on the first one. You can learn a little bit more on the second one. Uh, and by the end of camp, you're like, look back and you're like, wow, I've learned so many things. Uh, but don't let the fact that there are so many things to learn overwhelm you and shut you down. Number five, they settle for less than their best. Les Brown says, perfection does not exist. You can always do better, and you can always grow. Just because you're good doesn't mean you can't get better. And a lot of times students just kind of settle for being good enough. There's a lot of students, and this 
uh, camp who are really good. Some of them are going to think, well, I'm, I'm good enough. I'm good. I'm just going to you know, do my thing. I'm good. Most of the time when you sell for what you call good enough, you're selling way short of what you're capable of. You know, I, I, I'm good enough answering the pay. I can say framework and realism and firm built one. But that's selling it. Why? Why can't you make better answers than there's There's no reason that you can't. You can work at it. I mean, it might not be a thing that you spend all of your time on, but you can get a little better. You don't have to settle for that. You don't have to settle for good enough. For some of you who are like, oh, I only hope for a little bit forever. It's the only American I've ever heard. Well, you could do that, but you could also read different arguments. That would be okay. Uh, you could be really good at Wilderson and you could do something else. You don't have to sell for just doing the one argument. Uh, I don't really understand this one uh, as much, uh, especially among students who I think are really exceptional. Uh, and not the students who are just kind of doing debate in addition to something else. If you're you know, rocking three weeks of debate camp, I would think that it's pretty important to you. If you're rocking seven, I think uh, you probably don't really do anything else. Uh, <laughs> at least not passionately like this. Maybe even one other thing. But it's a big part of your life, right? And if it's a big part of your life, it's worth doing it well. It's worth uh, you know, trying really hard to get better in all areas of your game. Uh, last one, I think this, this is probably the most important thing uh, at the end of the day. Is it's a failure if you don't enjoy this experience. It's really easy for you to forget that this is supposed to be fun. Dale Carnegie, another, another good one that I really like. One of the most tragic things I know about human nature is that all of us tend to put off living. We're all dreaming of some magical rose garden over the horizon instead of enjoying the roses blooming outside our windows today. Very, very simple. Debate camp is fun. Look at, I mean, if you're sitting in the front, look at all of these people. Look at, look at this. This is amazing, right? You have kids from all over the country. You have kids from such diverse backgrounds. You have kids of all ability levels. You have kids from such different backgrounds. A lot of you are you know, meeting people from all over the country for the first time. That's amazing. You're in high school. You're spending, this is your summer. Right? That's like your off season. If it's not fun, then you're doing something wrong. You should try to make friends. You should try to, you know, hang out and enjoy yourself. In 10 years, even in five years, the stuff that you're going to remember about today camp is not like, I don't remember, the GDP of Cuba in 2013. You're not going to remember that. You're not even going to remember, oh, I remember that time that I, you know, did an awesome practice today and I like, totally beat this other team. You're not going to remember that. What you are going to remember is like, oh, I remember I was in lab with, you know, I was in lab with Hoosh, I was in lab with Colin. It was so fun. They're like, I wonder what that guy's up to. I'm going to check him out on Facebook. You're going to remember all of that stuff. You're going to remember like going to Epicurean and eating like a boat of sushi. You're going to remember going to Hemp and going to a movie or, you know, you know, whatever. You're going to remember all that stuff. So don't let the job part of debate camp interfere with the enjoy it. And I think when done well, I think we proved this last year, uh, when done well, the two are not incompatible. You can have a ton of fun while immersing yourself in debate as long as you don't lose perspective and forget why you're here. You're here because this is awesome. Debate camp is awesome. Debate is awesome, and you want to get better at it. Not just because you want to win more, but because it's fun to get better. Because it's rewarding to get better, and because it teaches you skills that you can use for the rest of your life. Because no matter what you do, you will have to get better. You will have to improve. You will have to deal with setbacks. You will have to expand your horizons. You will have to challenge yourself. And that's what you get to practice with. So, uh, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to learn about the topic. Uh, come back in 10 minutes.